Uh, this panel will be chaired by the, one of the founders, uh, co-founders of Catalyst, uh, Giancarlo Brotto. So Giancarlo, please come to the stage. Uh, we have on the panel the Honorable Abdul Rahman Abdul Razak, who is the Governor of Quara State. Governor, I'm sure I saw you. Uh, if you go to the, the yes, AB yes. desk, we have um, uh, Koku Asogba, who is the uh, Director General of Higher Education and Scientific Research for Benin. Uh, we do have your, your translation headsets yeah. when Mr. Asogba yeah. speaks, in, um, uh, speaks in French. And uh, we have Daza David, who is the Director General for Information and Communication Technology at Plateau State, Nigeria. And we have uh, Mukhtar Dabo, who is the Director of Science, Technology and Innovation for Gambia. And uh, finally, we have Samuel Francisco, who is the Director of the Information Technology Office for the Ministry of Higher Education for Angola. So, uh, gentlemen, if you could please come to the stage. And we'll, we'll move this panel on. This will be the uh, panel uh, before the coffee break. Samuel? Samuel. Yep, yeah. Samuel Francisco. Uh, we have uh, Daza David from uh, Plateau State. And uh, Mr. Asogba. Yes, he's just about to come. Do we have our governor? Okay, Giancarlo, we might be a governor short, but we're going to crack on. Cause... Ah. Okay. Yeah, Mukhtar from Gambia. I might be missing a governor, so I'm going <laughs> to... Who wants to fill in? Let me, let me do that. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm going to ask you to crack on, and we'll go to work and make the panel happen. Thank Abs you. Absolutely. Let's, let's get started. And thank you uh, all for joining. I'm going to sit closer to you so that uh, we don't feel so disconnected. And so the, the topic is, you know, an important one, because it's how do we keep going, right? How do we keep innovating? And obviously, this is a question that we have to ask. What are we doing to invest? Right, in science and research and innovation in our higher ed institutions. And so what I thought uh, I would do is I would, I'd bring you on a little journey with our panelists through a series of questions that I'm going to ask them. And, and this journey is going to take us through, you know, giving a sense of how we're investing, the things that you're doing that you're investing in right now in this topic. And then we're going to take a look at Next, what are the policies, right? The policies that we put in place for innovation. Uh, and then we're going to look at, you know, how are these the skills that we're developing as a result? And if there's time, and there's my timekeeper, I think we might, we might be able to do it, the industry-university um, collaboration. So, so let's start with this topic of, let's start with the topic of uh, current uh, investments. Um, and so, Kuku uh, Asoba, I'm going to ask you uh, a question related to uh, something that's happening in Benin right now, which is uh, the World Bank uh, just agreed on a new round of, run, um, a new round of funding uh, to support uh, higher education. And uh, as part of the uh, Second Africa Centers of Excellent uh, in Development uh, and Impact project, um, what we'd like to hear is priority field. So, um, to summarize, some of the, the fields of delivering high-quality education and applied research uh, within Benin. Benin. So, so give us a sense of the, the funding that's coming from the World Bank um, <coughs> and that initiative uh, towards um, applied research and innovation. I get that. <laughs> Translation is not working. Not working. Okay, sh should I translate again? I'm going to translate again. So, so there's, uh, the World Bank has agreed a new round of funding. Uh, specifically with a project on the second Africa Centers of Excellence for Development project. Can you tell us a bit about, um, just summarize for us, the priority fields uh, to deliver high quality education and applied research within Benin? Okay, merci. Le, la Banque Mondiale, effectivement, a, est en train d'intervenir au niveau du ministère de l'Enseignement Supérieur et de la recherche scientifique euh, au Bénin. Nous bénéficions euh, actuellement du second programme 
donc, euh, de la banque. En ce qui concerne euh, les centres d'excellence, et par rapport à cela, les priorités définies par le Bénin concernent surtout les sciences appliquées et technologies. Et de façon spécifique, on peut parler donc des sciences et mathématiques appliquées, tout ce qui est STEAM, c'est-à-dire sciences mathématiques, engineering et, et, et technologie, et l'agriculture et l'eau en particulier. D'ailleurs, par rapport à ce second programme, euh, nous bénéficions à la fois des sciences et mathématiques appliquées et euh, un centre d'excellence pour l'eau en ce qui concerne donc euh, euh, l'école polytechnique d'Abou Mekalavi et l'Institut national de l'eau. Disons de façon globale que le Bénin euh, dispose de quatre universités publiques euh, dont deux sont plurithématiques. Mais surtout, deux grandes universités sont dédiées, donc euh, l'une euh, aux sciences mathématiques, euh, engineering et technologie, et l'autre euh, à l'agriculture. Voilà ce que je peux résumer par là. Merci beaucoup. On, on, on a entendu un peu. Je peux parler le français aussi, mais. Ah, d'accord. <rire> For les gens, peut-être c'est mieux si je parle anglais. But thank you so much for, 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 for sharing a bit about that project and where the investments are going towards. Now, now Dasa David, I, I would like to ask you a question uh, because I would like to give a sense to the audience some new investments that are happening uh, within Plateau State, uh, specifically into scientific equipment and new technologies um, for higher education that you're specifically making related to um, the impact of skill development for your students. So tell us a bit about that investment. Okay, okay so um, <coughs> we, I would say we've come of age in terms of uh, investment into uh, scientific equipment. Mm. Uh, yesterday I was so happy I met somebody, uh, I think Eagle Scientific, who actually told me they are actually yeah, so currently uh, supplying tertiary institutions in, in Plato State with scientific equipment. But in the times of investments, uh, let me a little bit break down uh, our educational system in Nigeria. So we have this bottom-down approach where guidelines, uh, programs, everything related to tertiary institution comes from the federal down mm -hmm. to the state. So guidelines also come down from the federal down to the state. But in terms of funding, I think whoever owns tertiary institutions funds tertiary institutions. So but we've got to a situation where at state level, we have instances or practices where somehow some certain retention happens. So from tuition of students, when they pay some funds, certain retention are being held by the schools and certain mm -hmm. goes to the state government. So more like a business model to the state government. But recently in Plateau State, uh, the governor ensured that 100% of every fine, every levy and fee that the tertiary institution makes goes directly back into the tertiary institution. That way, the tertiary institution is able to, 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 to spend money on building certain infrastructure that they need to, 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 to build uh, whatever they are doing. And then, we are also at the verge of uh, signing the ICT policy in Plato State, like in a couple of weeks, which will uh, mandate every tertiary institution to have innovation hubs. Uh, more like uh, a place to grow startups to, to imbibe the spirit of entrepreneurship in, the, in, the, uh, in, in, in education in, in, in Plaza State. But the core emphasis is also on how ICT can, can be part of our daily lives in Plaza State. That is a strategic way of us trying to introduce uh, uh, open EDX and uh, module as a source for learning in Plaza State. So I'll say so, much, so far a lot of uh, investment is going to Equipping schools with, uh, with digital tools for learning. Fantastic. Thank you for, for sharing that. And, and Mukhtar, uh, so, so in Gambia, there's, there's, uh, there's a new partnership. Uh, and it's, it's actually, it was last September, I think, the ministry announced uh, DMU, which is uh, uh, D. Montfort University, uh, Leicester. Um, and it's aiming to build Gambia's first technology university. You know, what will be special about this university? Can you tell us a bit about it? What's different about it? 
Okay, um, thank you very much. Uh, um, this is uh, part of a very bold initiative undertaken by the government of the Gambia through the Ministry of Higher Education to transform um, all the major tertiary institutions into degree providing institutions. Um, the one you refer to is the transformation of the Gambia Technical Training Institute which is a, a technical institute that has been in existence for, the, for more than 30 years. They have strategic um, advantages in leveraging the country's um, um, initiative to build the critical mass of um, scientists, technologists, and, um, and um, engineers. So the country is transforming it into a university of science, applied sciences, basically and engineering and technology to be able to um, respond to the urgent need in terms of human um, capital needs for transforming the economy into um, a vibrant and um, uh, a very prosperous economy. So this university would be working in partnership, of course, with uh, 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 the University of uh, Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology and the University of uh, De Montfort in Leicester. Um, these universities will be providing mentorship to enable um, the university to start uh, providing these uh, degree programs basically in technology fields and engineering fields. So it is all towards um, um, achieving the country's uh, development blueprints, which is the, we call it the National Development uh, Plan. Uh, but also, it is geared towards accelerating the country's progress towards achieving um, the Sustainable Development Goals and the, and the Africa Agenda 2063. Fantastic project. Thank you for sharing that. And, and Samuel, I'm going to ask a slightly different question about funding, um, because you know, uh, in insufficient funding is one of the problems facing, uh, you know, science, technology, and, and innovation in Angola. Um, what's the ministry's plan to ensure there's more future funding? Well, um, in, the, in the case of the Gambia, there is a strong political will. And um, there is a strong commitment from also from the development partners. Yeah. Um, uh, billions of dollars have been committed um, towards ensuring the success of this uh, project. There are partners from the World Bank, um, the, 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 the Africa Centers for Excellence mm -hmm. Impact Project is also um, a contributor to this project. Um, we also have uh, other development partners from all over the world that are um, keenly interested in investing in education, but uh, most importantly, the government has taken bold steps to make sure that uh, this transformation program um, is a success. Like I said, the GTI is being transformed to you said we have the, uh, the Management Development Institute, which is also being transformed into a uh, university following the JIMPO model in, in Accra here, in Ghana here. So, you must also know we are also um, building the UTG, the University of the Gambia Farawabanta campus. Um, funding is always a problem, but um, the aggressive um, fundraising activity of the government, it's good enough to ensure the success of the project. Yeah. And, I'm, and so I'm gonna, you know, uh, Samuel, from, in the Angola perspective now, you know, funding, you know, what, what are the projects um, and initiatives um, that are being put in place to further fund research and innovation in the universities and the higher education? Okay, um, we currently um, working on establishing a national innovation fund in the Gambia to look into uh, funding research and innovation activities at, um, at the national level. But um, if you remember, for the last two, three years, the country has also been aggressively pursuing
capacity building for, for research and innovation vis-a-vis -vis the, um, the Africa Centers of Excellence project where we have um, trained um, hundreds of Gambians at both masters and PhD levels in key fields, STEM, including agriculture uh, and health basically at the PhD level to enable the, uh, the research capacity of the key and strategic um, economic sectors of the country. So it is a, it is a work in progress. The Innovation Fund would uh, ensure that um, um, not just the capacity is built, but an enabling environment is also provided um, to support existing um, research uh, endeavors of the country. Okay, thank you. And and the question for yourself, if you would like to, to address it, how would you how would you respond to it? Come again. Is it uh, the, uh, the Muito obrigado. Uh, thank you, but uh, apologize because uh, I will speak uh, Portuguese. Okay. Muito obrigado. Uh, em Angola. Um, Nós uh, temos o desafio já traçado, pensando desde o período 2013 até 2017, porque nós estamos preocupados com o capital humano. Então, no período 13-17, foi desenhado aquilo que nós chamamos do Plano Nacional de Formação do Quadro, que visa formar e potencializar os quadros nacionais. E pela mesma preocupação, estando inserido uh, neste, neste processo, uh, foi desenhado ou foram definidas aquilo que nós consideramos como, como sendo sete áreas uh, uh, prioritárias para o país, que nós envolvemos as áreas das engenharias, das ciências da saúde, das tecnologias, dos recursos hídricos, dos recursos minerais, uh, petróleos, e gás. Foram desenvolvidas sete áreas que nós consideramos aquilo que são áreas prioritárias. Mas, a par deste processo, uh, os fundos relativos à a, a investigação e desenvolvimento, que eram dependentes ou que são dependentes do, do orçamento nacional do Estado, as instituições de investigação neste, 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 neste sentido recebiam diretamente o seu financiamento por parte das instituições uh, do, de investigação. Mas o que é que o governo pensa fazer? Há aqui a intenção direta uh, da criação de uma agência nacional para o desenvolvimento científico e, te e tecnológico e que a partir dessa agência nacional que está a ser aprovado em decreto agora, vai canalizar todos os fundos relativos do OGE, relativo à investigação e desenvolvimento, para que as instituições de investigação e desenvolvimento possam, a partir dali, ir e buscar algum financiamento para pôr em curso os seus projetos e que esta mesma agência também vai funcionar como um catalisador para cooperar com empresas estrangeiras no sentido de poder uh, ganhar ou conseguir mais financiamento para, para podermos, então, financiar alguns projetos relativos a investigação e desenvolvimento, porque nós entendemos que o apetrechamento de laboratórios de investigação científica, desenvolvimento tecnológico e inovação, a nível do nosso governo, é uma prioridade. Mm -hmm. Well, that's great. I'm, so I'm going to stay. I'm going to stay with Angola. So uh, Francisco, keep uh, put your headset on. Um, we're going to stay with you because you you were mentioning certain initiatives and projects that you're funding. And, and I want to kind of highlight something that you were mentioning, which is, uh, it's about skill development, right? And so, and this, I'm going to ask this question for, for the rest of the panelists as well. So I'd like to think, like you to think about how you're going to respond to this question as I ask them. But, you know, the idea is that we improve uh, critical thinking and productivity, right? So that we improve, we increase um, the contribution to knowledge production and dissemination within, within the country. So what do you see as the policies that would be, you know, most urgent Right to ensure that we have innovation within higher education. What would you say are your policies that would be most urgent to, to ensure we have that happening in, in the higher education? So we'll start with the Angolan perspective. 
Ok. Uh, nós entendemos que a política para melhorar a, a qualidade e que visa melhorar a qualidade urgente, primeiramente passaria uh, pela competitividade. É importante que as nossas instituições tenham o, o poder crítico de competir entre elas, por um lado. Uh, por outro lado, é preciso criar uma lei totalmente robusta, uh, que visa incentivar o setor privado a apostar nas instituições, criar incentivo de inovação para o setor privado, para apostar a nível das instituições de ensino. É importante que esteja este, este lado aqui salvaguardado, porque o governo, por si só, não pode fazer tudo. É preciso que o empresariado, o setor privado, apoie diretamente as instituições, mas para isso temos que criar uma lei que visa defender efetivamente aquilo que nós consideramos as instituições privadas para poderem então estar a par com as instituições públicas. Isso é um, um dos critérios prioritários que nós entendemos que visa ser uma política aberta, não é? termos uma lei robusta de incentivo à inovação. É um ponto-chave para um grande desenvolvimento, porque se não houver competitividade entre as instituições então, não vamos sentir a evolução da investigação. Muito obrigado. Fantastic. So we heard is, you know, in competitive, competitiveness, building uh, trust and confidence with the private sector, and the important thing is that, that relationship, right, between it and the partnerships, that we can't do it alone, but how do we build policies to ensure that we have partnerships going? So, so Mukhtar, let's, I'm going to ask the same question to you in Gambia. What would you say are the, you know, the most urgent <coughs> policies that need to be put in place to make sure that we're innovating within higher education? Okay, um, thank you very much. To improve access to higher education, um, in addition to what the gentleman from um, Portugal, uh, is it Portugal? Angola. 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 Um, in addition to encouraging uh, public-private partnerships, uh, I would also add the fact that there is need to urgently look at uh, integrating technology to improve um, to in improve or increase access to um, tertiary and higher education because this is one part of the economy that is uh, that puts a lot of pressure on the on the economy because education in general it's is very expensive and it becomes more expensive once you reach the tertiary and higher education levels and it puts a lot of pressure on government budgets that, and in our countries, uh, there is usually a struggle between financing education, health, agriculture, and other government services. So the integration of technology can be seen as a means of cutting down cost of, uh, to higher education by um, digitizing some of the um, educational content by providing access to higher education to the underprivileged, especially those that are in remote communities, far from university establishments. Now, I think uh, from a futuristic point of view, we should be looking at uh, ways of um, improving access to uh, um, tertiary and higher education using technology, uh, which I think it's very much possible. Okay, so you agree with some of these points and you've added to that integration of technology and making sure we have equitable access, right? especially some of our marginalized communities. Fantastic. Now, let, let's go over to uh, Dasser in, in Nigeria. I'm going to assume, based on the work and uh, your involvement with uh, partnerships with the private sector, that that's, of course, something on the agenda. If you want, you can elaborate, but if that's a policy that's important to you, tell us about it and why. What other policies as well? I'd love to hear your perspective. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think one problem uh, in Africa is uh, we are really not paying attention to insights from data, from grants, from grant schemes that have worked, successful grants, personally. I always tell people I'm a product of in free internet. Now, how that works, uh, from 2000 to 2006, there was, uh, fortunately, I graduated from the University of George. I'm happy the DVC is here. <laughs> 
So there, I think that was, a, that, that, was a, that was a grant from Carnegie of our, I think, about $6 million or so. What that grant did was to have fiber optics laid down across all, all the clusters, the university clusters, meaning the hostels, different uh, departments, faculties, and all of that. And then internet was free in the school. So they, it, it was a curiosity to wanting to learn more because it was new in the environment. Now, cut down the line after the expiration of the grant, people who graduated within this, that period are successful today. I studied biochemistry in the, as first degree, but I spent most of my time in the computer labs, in the computer labs doing one thing or the other. There was a program, they called the internship program, where students were trained. After training, you move from one level to another. From internship, you move to, I think, what they call um, apprentice. From apprentice, so you are placed in school labs to manage the school labs, and also part of maintaining and supporting the school infrastructure. So instead of the usual outsourcing model of bringing in contractors to come and build platforms for school, students were the one doing that. So students were equipped with knowledge, and students were placed in diverse labs to actually f support and maintain these platforms. So at the end of the day, the entire technology requirement of the school was built by students. So that gave us the initial job experience, usually, that would be needed if you graduated from school looking for juicy offers and all yeah. of that. We all graduated as software engineers, good software engineers, some are working in Silicon Valley and all of that. Now, what happened to the insights what happened with the insights from data as such? These are things that we really do not pay attention to. And if I'm going to drive any policy drive towards human capital development, it has to be from insights we've received from that. And that is why uh, in Plato State, we, we, we are trying to, in, in the policy document, we are trying to look at how we can create a talent pipeline where students from day one in the university or any tertiary institution get acquainted with knowledge and then grow at each level up to the time where, of course, uh, from the, uh, I said earlier, we have this, uh, our curriculum is driven from up down, from do top bottom. The executive secretary of NUC, I heard him yesterday when he said that it is sideways, which is a compulsory internship program for university students. At 300 level, you have to be placed in, uh, in, in, in companies where you, you have six months, uh, you, you equip yourself with six months experience working there. And then, so what we are trying to achieve is to see that students graduate from the school already equipped with job experience and knowledge. Great, so, okay, so there's a hyper focus that I heard in all your dialogue was the importance on the student, right? And what is the experience of the student. But then you also mentioned important piece, which is there's insights that we glean from that. And what are we doing? How are we focusing on making sure that we take those insights and they inform our okay. practice, inform our policies? I think that's uh, an astute uh, observation. And, and so now, Kukua Soba, let, let me ask you the same question. You know, policies that you would say would be most urgent, most pressing, if we're to make sure that we maintain and improve innovation within, within uh, Africa. Oh, la, la traduction est toujours faible, mais j'estime que c'est la même question posée aux autres. Oui, je, je, je peux le demander en français si c'est si mieux. Je, je demande les, 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 les policies, policies, I don't know how you say policies, politique, 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 les policies, oui. um, qui sont plus importantes pour ensurer qu'on a de um, l'innovation dans nos institutions d'éducation, de, de higher education. Merci beaucoup. Je, je crois que la... Je le répétais, c'est pratiquement la même question que celle posée aux autres. Au, au Bénin, je ne veux pas dire que euh, maintenant je veux définir une politique, parce que c'est depuis 2016 que les diagnostics ont été posés. Et il est assez clair au niveau du programme d'action du gouvernement au Bénin que... Euh, Le secteur de l'enseignement supérieur en particulier et celui de l'éducation en général est un socle important pour le développement économique. Et par rapport à ça, je parlerai plutôt donc des mécanismes que nous sommes en train de mettre en place ou que nous avons déjà mis en place pour accélérer le processus d'amélioration de l'innovation technologique au niveau de l'enseignement supérieur. Commençons d'abord par le ministère du numérique et de la digitalisation. Ce ministère est désormais connu chez nous comme un ministère transversal. 
Parce que si on résout le problème au niveau d'un secteur comme euh, l'enseignement supérieur seul, et on n'en tient pas compte au niveau des autres secteurs, aucune politique euh, ne sera véritablement viable. Donc euh, ça doit être vu de façon transversale, de façon globale, et c'est à ça que nous nous attelons. Pour être euh, de façon très spécifique au niveau donc, de l'enseignement supérieur, euh, au sein de notre ministère, il y a désormais le Centre béninois de la recherche scientifique et de l'innovation qui s'occupe de ce secteur et met un accent sur la combinaison entre la recherche et l'innovation, parce que ce n'est pas la même chose, n'est-ce pas mmh. De la même manière, nous avons créé au niveau de l'État un fonds. C'est le Fonds national de la recherche scientifique et de l'innovation technologique. Donc, il est question de renforcer un fonds comme celui-là pour venir en aide aux structures qui en ont besoin. Il y a également une agence qui a été créée pour la valorisation des résultats de recherche et de l'innovation. Donc, ce n'est pas la même chose, mais on les combine pour atteindre donc les objectifs de, de, de plus grande fiabilité. Et comme je le disais, tout ce qui est introduction de technologie numérique et de digitalisation, est vu de façon globale à partir du ministère chargé du numérique et de la digitalisation. Ça fait que nous ne faisons pas euh, de, de, de cloison. Il est question, donc, lorsque nous voulons définir, par exemple, une dorsale de la fibre optique, euh, que ça soit vu de façon globale, que euh, ça intéresse à la fois les universités, hein, les centres de santé, et <coughs> les data centers, pour que tout soit relié de façon globale pour plus d'efficacité. Donc c'est ce que je peux dire euh, de façon succincte. Et je, vais, je vais te demander une autre question qui est, est, est similaire. Oui. I'm gonna, for those of you who don't put their heads in some time, I'm going to ask a question related to uh, specifically getting women to access these programs. Uh, so je vais demander les, les, les femmes. Qu'est-ce qu'on fait pour ensurer qu'il y a des programmes de qualité pour les femmes rentrer dans ces programmes d'innovation, dans, dans, dans des institutions que tu, que tu as parlé Les femmes Les femmes, les femmes, les femmes the women. The, the women. Ah, les femmes Les femmes. Ah, les femmes. Okay. Ma prononciation, <rire> il y a plus de années que je ne parle pas en français très, alors. Très bien, très bien. <rire> euh, au, au, au Bénin, pour euh, ne pas stigmatiser, nous nous sommes refusés à une politique de discrimination. Ah oui, parce que c'est important pour nous que la femme sache dès le départ qu'elle a toutes les capacités que l'homme a et en matière d'intuition, la femme est même plus avancée que l'homme. Donc nous ne jouons pas pour dire ça, nous faisons ça pour aider la femme de façon spécifique. On va tous à la compétition et on est sûr que de par l'histoire même de notre pays, la femme a toujours été devant les plus grands combats. Cependant, le gouvernement encourage tous les programmes spécifiques. Il y a le programme euh, Suède, par exemple, qui est le programme d'autonomisation des femmes euh, pour la dividende, euh, dividende démographique dans le Sahel. Le Bénin, le gouvernement, apporte son soutien euh, à travers certains ministères, dont spécifiquement le ministère de l'enseignement supérieur, pour accorder des bourses à des femmes qui ont quelques difficultés. Et donc euh, l'accès aux technologies, et tout ça c'est vu euh, à travers donc, euh, ces appuis spécifiques, mais c'est ce qu'on peut faire à n'importe quelle autre personne, quel que soit le genre, qui a des difficultés pour accéder, mais là... Euh, le, le programme Suide étant un programme spécifiquement orienté vers l'autonomisation de la femme et de la dividende démographique. Nous accompagnons des programmes du genre et les ONG aussi qui euh, œuvrent euh, en matière d'autonomisation de, de la femme. Merci. Et donc, le spirit de ça, que j'aime, c'est que ce n'est pas juste faire en sorte qu'il y ait accès et que nous faisons en sorte qu'il y ait accès à tous ces programmes, mais c'est que vous communiquez et que vous communiquez et que vous faites clair And that everybody has access to these programs and everybody has an equal opportunity to find success in there. It doesn't matter whether you're male, you're female, or you have, may have some, some other, um, you know, thing going on. So I, I appreciate the, 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 
the response uh, to that question because it is an important one. Now, I want to sh shift gears a bit for all the panelists and start talking about kind of the skills that we want to develop and its impact within our their own economies. And so, uh, that said, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you a question related to, you know, if we want to make sure we have you know this next generation of entrepreneurs. Right, that we're, we're developing their capacities and we want these, you know, these next entrepreneurs to develop our economy right, within your country. Tell us about the policies you're implementing that will help develop you know, a, a culture of innovation within the state. Okay, uh, so <coughs> earlier I, I mentioned, uh, well, let me say that I've been this talk about the future of work and the work of the future. So we have a whole lot of students graduating from, from, from the university, from tertiary institutions, without the skills that will be required, or without the skills that the future needs, sort of. So what we're trying to look at, policies around the, the building of maker spaces, fabrication labs, central for every student or tertiary institution to have access to, more like giving them access to 3D printers, laser, cutter, most of the equipment they need to, the, that, that is needed in building hardware and all of that. Then secondly, the, already at federal level we have a con already a convergence between uh, the private sector and tertiary institution. Because as much we, there's an understanding that as much as tertiary institution give these students uh, an expert knowledge there's need for application of this knowledge in diverse companies. Yeah, well. So the convergence is also a key policy part which this country in general is looking at. And that is why I mentioned the sideways program where students meet with industry and then get to learn. After six months, they go back to schools, yeah. complete, and then come back. I also want to mention that after the civil war in Nigeria, we had uh, a program that was actually meant to integrate every part of the country together. It is the National Youth Corp, which the purpose was actually for integration. Because uh, the, the, the reason for the war was, to in this, was in the, for the country to be disintegrated, sort of. So the program, the NYC program was created for integration purpose. But these days we see it performing magic in the sense that it is, you spend one year after university working for companies, which is solving the issue of uh, the separation between the tertiary institution from the, the other, uh, from, from, from the industry. So it's more like solving two things at the same Connecting time now. Yeah, yeah. Fanta no, that's fantastic. And and um, in Mukhtar, in Gambia, I was looking at a statistic: <laughs> sixty percent of the population in Gambia are under the age of twenty-five. Right. So if you think about that, you know some of the key long-term challenges, you know, are, are the lack of skills necessary to build institutions. Right or you even have the lack of private sector job creation. So how are you using science, research, and technology to you know, bridge the skills gap in Gambia? Okay, um, thank you very much. In the Gambia, um, like I said, there is considerable effort to build capacity. The idea of transforming most of our institutions to universities, technical universities, is to make sure that those skills gaps are um, holistically addressed. Um, well, there is a lot of um, ongoing initiative also within the, the government as well as within the private sector to improve the potential of the private sector to create jobs. So uh, there is an ongoing initiative, for example, which is um, talking about entrepreneurship education right across the education spectrum. So from primary right through university, um, students are exposed to entrepreneurial education. There have been a series of also ongoing efforts to encourage um, new startups, basically tech startups. We've also seen an increase in the number of um, new tech-based companies that um, are registered in the Gambia, actually owned by Gambians. So from the perspective of education, what we are uh, trying to do is to make sure that every um, child that leaves school has also built the culture of entrepreneurship, to be able to be enterprising. 
Now, uh, this is secondary level, but also at the university level, we want every graduate to be able to graduate with a culture of entrepreneurship embedded within its DNA. Um, to make sure that once they can't even find jobs for themselves, there is vast opportunity for them to be able to create their new startups. There are various initiatives already on the ground to support um, new startups, um, venture capitalists, and, and stuff like that uh, that have been in place. And so we're hearing, you know, and if you look at a theme, right, we're, we want a culture of equity, we want a culture of innovation, we want a, we want a culture of, you know, um, uh, research and innovation. So it's, there's these common themes that we're hearing throughout all of you. Um, and, you know, we, we only have a few minutes left, but I want to make sure, uh, Samuel, um, you, you have an opportunity to share, you know, one of the statistics global, when you look at global comparisons in terms of indicators on uh, performance and research and innovation, and many of you are probably aware that there are different institutions that do this. You know, Angola has some room for improvement on this front um, as it relates to improving the, the, the work on uh, research and innovation. So t tell us a bit about you know, what, what you're currently doing to, to kind of move yourself up on the map of uh, your progress towards that. Thank you very much. At the level of the government of Angola, in what concerns the national program of development, there is a program specific for the improvement of promotion da inovação e do desenvolvimento tecnológico e que este programa pré-definido para a melhoria da inovação, para a promoção e melhoria da inovação e desenvolvimento tecnológico foram definidos dois objetivos principais. Um desses objetivos é intensificar o avanço científico tecnológico, um dos, dos objetivos principais, e o outro é a melhoria da transferência de tecnologias. E, a partir destes, destes mesmos objetivos, foram predefinidos aquilo que nós consideramos de ações prioritárias. Trazer mais um empresariado a nível das instituições de ensino, procurar criar empresas de incubadoras, porque isto, este, este vazio que se verificou também foi produzido a partir dos resultados saídos do primeiro inquérito nacional de inovação em Angola. A partir dali vimos algum, alguns déficits que era preciso chamar as empresas. Então chamou-se as empresas, apresentou-se os resultados relativos à não inovação por parte dessas mesmas empresas. Depois criou-se uma ficha de elaboração que as mesmas empresas partilham entre elas, preenchem esses mesmo, essa, essa mesma ficha e Angola, para ter mais quesitos, ou está mais forte, uhum. visitou aquilo que é o ecossistema dos reinos dos Países Baixos, que tem estado a cooperar com Angola para ajudar o reforço da melhoria do empreendedorismo a nível das empresas e o setor de ensino superior, nesse caso, a nível das instituições de, de ensino. Então, há essa colaboração estreita, há um programa efetivo por parte do governo de Angola, que está a ser implementado no período dos oito, 2022, e que as ações efetivamente diretas que têm a ver com as instituições de ensino superior, inovação e empreendedorismo é uma prioridade do setor de Angola. Hum. Thank you so much. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to summarize kind of the key themes that you heard today in the panel um, on this topic. You know, it's, you heard some initiatives, right? You heard many initiatives and funding and priorities uh, towards different new projects, specifically to address different issues. Uh, we heard about policies, right, to ensure that we have, you know, innovation happening within our countries. Uh, there's a lot of discussion about skill development that we need, right? And, and I think that the theme that I heard is building this culture of, right? What is the culture of what that we want to build within our, our programming um, and the last thing that we heard and you you highlighted it and we'll end with it is this this concept of partnerships and collaborations right and between the government and the universities between the private sectors and we heard that as a, a theme uh, all throughout so so i encourage all of you if you heard any of the uh, initiatives or topics that interest you or that is similar reach out to any one of these gentlemen after the uh, the panel or at lunch uh, to learn more about it and i encourage you to form partnerships with other nations um, we we have to wrap up uh, this panel discussion and I want to thank and maybe give everybody uh, give them a round of applause for, for contributing. Thank you so much for, uh, for being part of it. And uh, we're going to end uh, just with a quick video. Uh, as you know, uh, yesterday I did the opening keynote uh, and I'm from an organization called Catalyst. Uh, we are, we'll show the video to tell you more about it.
The idea is to... The idea is to work with education leaders all over the world and bring them together, aim them at certain problems and obstacles and challenges and see if we can't figure out ways to move past them. The point of Catalyst is to harness all of those ideas and see if we can't move the needle on some of the things that are obstructing education. I love this idea that we want to have collaboration and actually for so long we've had silos and actually that's one of the reasons I've come tonight to be part of a collaboration to be part of a group that are about being a catalyst. We can learn from each other. We reach out of our boxes into other people's spaces. Boy, do we learn from them, but boy, do they learn from us. I have so many students and faculty and staff working on innovative ideas, and often they are in all remote areas of the world. To be able to dial in the research knowledge and the sort of talent pool that's at Harvard with problems that are out there, to have that feedback loop with users, to me, that's incredibly exciting. This is the launch week for us. We've been hosting events all over the world. Australia, South Africa and London are behind us and we're moving towards the US with Washington DC on the cards. The thing that's important about all of this is that it's a online and an offline community. It's important to, to use the virtual online thing because it breaks down barriers and people can connect from all over the world. But we know that that face-to-face -face interaction, that human touch is still such an important thing. I'm really excited to be part of this. It's really cool. Okay, thank you very much to our panel there. And uh, just before we start the coffee break, firstly, in regard to the coffee break, I highly encouraged if I look across a full room on the final day of Innovation Africa, and it's lovely for everybody to be in the room. Uh, we have a fairly tight pre-function area, so please, uh, we've got classroom style, so grab your coffees and teas, bring your cakes, and, and, and bring them back into the room. I am going to start the next session at 11 o'clock on the button because we've got a very important uh, uh, session relating to education for all and then we've got the final of Miss Geek Ghana and you'll all participate where you can have a vote. If you make sure that you're, you're online, uh, this is the, the ID uh, of the network uh, and there's the password. Uh, I know everybody has 3G or 4G but that's the high-speed Wi-Fi provided by Vodafone. Any problems with connectivity, Vodafone are here. UC Wireless, who are doing the connection with the access points, are here. And you can go and trouble a, a man called Quinton if you're not getting online. Uh, but 11 o'clock, we come back, and we've got a really exciting morning after the coffee break. Thank you very much, everybody. <laughs>